if someone were to ask us what is the definition of an ideal society i'm sure many of us would have different answers but we would agree on certain points such as an ideal city is one wherein people live in peace and harmony where there is sharing of resources where there is brotherly love and concern it would be a society that is marked by communal peace communal harmony a society wherein each individual is interested in the well-being of the other a society that develops the potential of its members allowing each member to reach to his full potential i'm sure that some of our answers would be close to this and one can just imagine if at all there were to be an ideal society i'm sure it would make a big difference to the world it would be a kind of an exemplary society but we see that such kind of an ideal society will only remain an ideal provided we take certain steps now in today's first reading we are told of how the first christians lived as ideal communities they were the perfect example of following the gospel values perfectly we see there was so much harmony there was so much peace so much love and concern for one another and in a way if at all we were to define the kingdom of god now probably we might be wondering jesus spoke so much about the kingdom of god what is this kingdom of god if at all it were to materialize this would be the kingdom of god a place where everyone is equal where everyone is like a brother and sister to one another there is peace harmony and each one developing to their own potential doing things according to each one's own capability but in today's gospel we see that jesus says it is indeed possible for us to reach this ideal society it is possible for us to create communities that follow the gospel values but you may ask how can we do this and first and foremost is it really possible to have an ideal society in today's world well let's find that out during today's episode of tea time with the word but before we can begin our reflection let us take a look at the readings for tuesday in the second week of easter today's first reading is from the acts of the apostles chapter 4 verses 32 to 37 and the gospel is from the gospel according to saint john chapter 3 verse 7b to 15 in a way today's readings speak about building a community which is full of peace full of harmony and one in which every individual is treated equally let us take a look at the first reading of today now the first reading of today tells us that people living in that community were of one heart and soul in other words there was union of mind and spirit union of hearts wherein people were able to think alike people were able to mingle around with one another without any differences without any kind of uh, negative feelings etc and at the same time we also are told that they had things in common there was a lot of sharing going on and in this way we see that the apostles testimony also was very much proved to be correct because we see that the apostles were doing their best to give a good message a good example to the people they were the ones who were motivating the people to live according to the gospel values and here we see that this christian community which we see in today's first reading was exactly one that was following all the gospel values 
and we are told that there was no needy person in such a community because everyone would look after the needs of the other if somebody has more he would give to somebody who has less and in this way we can say that this would be a dream of every Christian and in a way it would also be a dream of each and every person to live in such a community where there is peace and harmony where there is no unnecessary tensions involved but here also we see we are told in this early Christian community though things were going very smoothly in the beginning things begin to crumble inconsistencies creep in and then we see that the communities are no longer ideal at the same time in today's gospel passage Jesus tells Nicodemus to be born anew and we see that Nicodemus is quite confused he has not understood what the Lord was really trying to tell him and therefore Jesus tells him if you are not able to understand things of this world how can you understand heavenly things at the same time we should realize that it is not very easy especially in today's world it is not very easy to maintain oneness in mind and heart we need to be totally exceptional in order to really resonate with everybody and in a way this calls for grace though it is difficult it is not impossible because with the grace of God we will be able to eventually resonate with one another and be with one mind and spirit and this is what Jesus tells Nicodemus that he must be born from above he must be born anew he must be born in the Holy Spirit and therefore this is what all of us are called to do we are called to be born anew Jesus speaks about being a new creation I'm sure that after the Easter celebrations after the Easter liturgy all of us have that renewed zeal and vigor our old selves have been crucified along with Christ on Good Friday and therefore we are now a risen Easter people people who are positive people who are optimistic people who are full of zeal in order to bring about the kingdom of God on earth and even though we see that one may say in today's world it would be completely difficult in order to have this kind of ideal society but one thing we can ensure that even though we may not have unity per definition but we will be able to guarantee that there would be respect for differences of each other there would be unity in diversity there would be respect for each individual for who he or she really is and in this way we see that if we are to build a community we definitely need to be born anew and this also involves clearing our prejudices many times we see that our prejudices our preconceptions are some things that prevent us from fostering relationships with others sometimes we have already heard something about a particular group or about a particular person and when we interact with this person what happens is whatever we have heard from others we kind of keep that in our mind and even though when we are interacting with that person we tend to look at that person from the lens of what we have heard which thus prevents us from really understanding or looking at the real person looking at who he really is and when Jesus says that we should be born anew this is what he means we should clear our perspectives we need to clear our minds and hearts we need to fill our hearts and minds with the grace of God it is only then that we will be really be able to accommodate others in our lives that we will be able to share things with others and this will be possible only when we have that spirit of reaching out to others and welcoming others into our fold coming back to today's first reading 
we hear that the early Christians lived united. They had one heart and mind. And this was the mentality with which they went about, openly and generously sharing their possessions with one another. We are also told that, in fact, there was one person who was so much impressed by this way of going about that he sold a piece of the property and brought the money and gave it to the apostles. And this is exactly what it would mean to be an ideal society. We have spoken so much about the ideal society. And in a way, it would be everyone's dream to have this. But we can see that it is not impossible because at one point of time or the other, it existed. And if it existed at that point of time, it can definitely exist even today, in spite of all the difficulties and hurdles that we may have to face. In today's Gospel reading, we see the interaction between Nicodemus and Jesus continues. And Jesus tells Nicodemus that there is no logical explanation for being born from above. Naturally, this does not mean that he will literally be born again. Rather, it will be that he will be born anew. We have already seen one area of being born anew, that is clearing our minds, clearing our perspectives. And here Jesus also speaks about a new gift, a new spiritual gift that all of us will receive. And by this, Jesus refers to the gift of the Holy Spirit. And in a way, we can all ask ourselves this question. What is the spiritual gift that you desire in this Easter season? Is there a particular grace that you have been praying for? Is there something that you have offered to the Lord? Let us bring these thoughts to our minds. And what is the new life that you desire? Now, during the Lenten season, we spoke about recognizing our faults, recognizing our shortcomings and growing in those areas. I'm sure we have identified certain areas of growth. And what is the new life that you now desire? After all, we see that Easter season is a time of miracles and new life. If we look in nature, we see that during this time, trees that have shed leaves begin to get new leaves. There is new life everywhere. Flowers are blossoming and we see that there are fruits on the trees as well. They are all coming to life, blossoming and sharing their beauty with each and every one. And in a way, let us trust that God will give us a new life during this Easter season. While we may desire for something very ardently, God may choose to give it to us at an appropriate time. Sometimes this may come in the form of an unexpected gift. And therefore, we need to keep our eyes, minds and hearts open to receive this grace and beauty of the Lord. In a way, God gives us a gift and we need to accept that. And to accept it, we need to be alert. We need to be ready to accept it. How can we be ready? It is only by living according to what Jesus has told us. Because this gift that the Lord gives us will give us new grace to continue our lives in the proper direction. And as we reflect on these readings, we pray for the grace that we too may be able to clear our minds and hearts, that we may look at things from a new, renewed perspective. We may clear our prejudices against others and that we may do our own part towards creating this ideal society so that one day what was a reality in the past may become a reality in the future. Amen.